and welcome back to the shed. This is a continuation on from last week's video where we diagnosed the possible problems with this chair. So what we're going to be doing is taking apart some of these joints and I'll show you how to repair a broken pinned mortise and tenon joint. Hope you enjoy. So following on from last week's video, obviously we've taken the tenons apart now so we can actually see what's going on. Now, drilling the, the dowels out does sometimes cause a few problems within the tenons and you do accidentally drill in the wrong spot and cause a few more issues than were there initially. But there's no other real easy way to actually take these joints apart, so that's why I drill them out. Now, looking at just these four tenons, we can see what's gone wrong with a few of them, and we can also see that these lower stretches don't really have anything from, obviously this one down here is wobbling, so the bottom one's got something wrong, but looking up the top here, there's nothing particularly wrong with these two, two tenons right here. Now, it may have just been that the mortise was a little oversized on these, and that's why they're moving. But for today's video, I'm just gonna repair one of these for you. So, what I'm gonna do is choose the worst one, which has two of the issues that I thought could have been the problem. So looking at the tenon here, we can see that we've got material missing here. And this is where, if we look down here, this is where the dowel actually was. This is where my drill bit came through. It came through on the correct side here, but moved off on this side. But I got the majority of the dowel, which means we're left with this extra little gap and also a broken piece here. And we can see that there's actually a split running down the actual stretcher on both sides which means that that movement in here allows this area in here to move so it would allow movement within that pin that was there. If we look around this side on the tenon we can see that the corner of the tenon is sheared off completely which probably occurred when the whole tenon started moving and also where the second the, the dowel here is I can actually see just on the top here that we've actually got a split running through here and we'll also have to try and glue that back up. So before we proceed any further with this, what you want to do is get a piece of wood and size it to the thickness of your tenon, and that'll be the material you use to repair your tenons. Now, I like to use smaller sticks and just prepare them with a hand plane for each particular tenon because the thicknesses might be a little bit out since they're done by hand. So what I'm using here is a piece of jarrah to repair this. Uh, if you can get the same timber as is used on the, the chair, that'd be ideal. Also had some success just using pine to repair these, and I haven't had the chair fail yet. And as you can make chairs in this form out of pine, I think it does work, but a hardwood is the, the most ideal in my mind. So the first part of this tenon that I'm going to address is on this edge here where we've this part missing. So what I'm going to do is come in with the chisel and pair it back so it's square and it actually gives us a place to actually repair right on this very edge here. So I'm going to slowly just pair my way back to that with a nice sharp chisel. Come in this way just to get that final pairing and square it up nicely because you can look down here and eyeball across. In the case of this repair, I'm probably just going to glue a little teeny tiny block on here back out to the thickness of what the tenon was before on here. But I do like to try and get some down in the rest of the meat here. So for the sake of this video, I'm going to try and drill down in here and then square it off with a chisel. So we can see this discoloration here, that's where the tenon got to just there. So this is about four or five mil just in here. I'll check with my six millimeter drill bit first. And if you can see there, it looks like that's gonna do the job. So what I'm gonna do is punch a couple of holes down through in here and try and get a little bit of material down below. Now, since this is such a small piece, it's gonna be hard to chisel, even with your smallest of chisels. So I'm only gonna be going down a little bit because the, the glue contact, with the side of the tenon here would be enough to actually stop it re-breaking and it would hold and repair the job. But we're just gonna go that little bit further today. Mm -hmm. 
So if we look in here, we can see we've taken some of that material out. I've gone a little bit over the line there. That's not going to affect this too much. Now I have about a three millimeter uh, chisel here, and I'm going to use that just to clean this up. I have another slightly larger chisel here, which is a five millimeter chisel. And I'm just going to use that to square off the large part of this. And we can bring it in alignment here. You can see where the material needs to come off. So now we've cleared our mortise out, we need to then match how much material we need. So you can do that by bringing your, your tin of material up and marking it with a pencil. And you can also get a little depth gauge just using your pencil as well. Bring that on here. So we know we need to go to about there, so I'm going to go a little bit further than that and chop this block off. And then cut back down against this. So I've gone ahead and made that little block that we required just here. And now we've got to obviously trim it down with a chisel to get it to actually fit. It's a process of coming up here, seeing how much more material needs to come off, and paring it back against a stop. Get a pencil in here if you're too close to your fingers. That's as far down as it goes and it's a nice tight and nice and tightly held by the, the timber. Now we need to go ahead and glue that into place. I need the very littlest amount, a little dab there, and then I'm going to put a little bit here and just wipe it on the side of that tenon because it doesn't need much to hold this. And make sure I get this piece the correct way around, which happens to be that way. Now I'm just going to use the butt of the chisel to tap that down because it's something nice and small. And if you look from this side, you can see that we've got a little tiny gap here. So what we're going to do is clamp that together and pull that back into that tenon to close that gap up. Now if you had a much larger piece, I would actually drill an auger down about a good inch but for a little repair on the side of the tenon I find that that's enough to give it plenty of strength and the glue strength alone is probably enough to repair that. Now to repair this this next section I'm going to use the saw to chop it out and then we're just going to put a small filler piece in there. Then we pare down Pair down this side as well. And so now that's pushed down, we can go ahead and put this clamp on. So now I've got some six millimeter Tasmanian oak dowel here. And we're literally just going to cut a small section of that off and glue that back into that hole. What I'm going to do is just put a little tiny bit of glue on this, roll it around, push it into place. So you can see here now that this glue's dried up here. So now what we need to do is trim off these little blocks and then try to fit it back to the mortise before gluing and repinning it. the hole. So now we want to try and fit it to the mortise. Now it's this side mortise here which goes into the back, that's the one we took apart. So bring it back to the mortise and we'll try and see how it fits. Now I don't know if you can see here, but this tenon is a little bit long, so what we need to do is just trim a little bit of material off this side block here. So 
Right, so I'm convinced this will tap back together now. So what we need to do is apply some glue to this joint. A little bit along this, each side. A little bit on the top, on each side, and on the ends of each tenon. So now that we've got this to this stage, you can either tap it together with a hammer or use a clamp to pull it together. I think I'm just going to use a hammer in this situation and just tap it back together. Now you may require to lift it up a little bit higher to this or right, make sure it's really clamped in. So I'm going to move it into the center of my vise to hold it. So now this joint's back together. You'll put the whole thing back together and then redrill these holes for the dowels. And then line it up as straight as you can. I like to try and keep the dowel on in one piece, so I like to fill the hole with a bunch of glue. Then bring it in like this, push the dowel in until it stops, and then saw it off just above the surface. And then I just need another little section to fill that extra little gap I showed you there, which is not the full size of a dowel. So I've actually got this little bit of broken dowel here, and I'm just going to tap that into place. So I'm just going to saw it. Then bring the chisel in, flush it off. Obviously that's one way to repair it and if you've got big problems on your tenon that's the way I repair it by drilling down into the stretcher there and then putting that block in. But if you just have a little corner missing like on this tenon here, and I'll bring you in in a sec, I've just glued a block in and I'll just saw that back on the angle just to fill that corner that's just broken off the tenon. And I found that works quite well also because the glue is stronger than the rest of the timber, so I don't think it actually needs the extra support there because it's only a little corner that's stopping the tenon from holding. So it's literally just a block glued right on the corner here. And that works if you've just got little minor defects in your tenons. So uh, there you have it folks, I hope that uh, gives you some idea of how to repair a broken pinned mortise and tenon joint. Uh, yes, it does damage the joint a little bit trying to take it apart, but it was already damaged. And any of the damage you do do, you can repair quite easily. Uh, further along the repair route, if there's some little holes and stuff, you can put filler in there. And you'll see that when I actually uh, release the full restoration video. But there you have it. So if you like this video and you'd like to see some more restoration videos, please check out the playlist down here. And if you'd like to continue to support me, please consider checking me out on Patreon. Bye for now.